The best thing Please you do. could say about Nick Sirianni's press conference is that he wasn't exactly like Adam Gase, who showed up to the Jets <laughs> press conference looking high. Now, you couldn't <laughs> say that, but let's be honest. Didn't the thought cross our minds? He looked like a deer in headlights. I don't know what the hell he was talking about. He was mumbling his words. Um, I agree with my, 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 my colleague at the Philadelphia Daily News, Marcus Hayes, where he talked about him lying. You didn't even think about the starting quarterback. That did you, no, the thought never even crossed your mind. You took the Eagles job. You interviewed for the Eagles job. You took the Eagles job. Oh, by the way, your former boss in Indianapolis, who's the head coach there, where was he before? He was in Philadelphia as your offensive coordinator slash quarterback coach, guiding them to a Super Bowl championship with a backup in Nick Foles. And you take this job after working under him, and it never crossed your mind. <laughs> about whether or not Carson Wentz or Jalen Hurts would be your son. You didn't even cross it. As Marcus Hayes pointed out, you lied. And, and Philadelphia, better than most places, has a BS meter that, I mean, they can pick up on yeah. it like clockwork. And I, he, this is a bad start for him. And all I'm going to say before handing it to you, Max, is this. As a guy that worked in Philadelphia for 17 years, for the Philadelphia Inquirer. When you are a head coach and you're the man assigned to talk to the media on a daily basis and you come across as that, my prayers are officially extended to Nick Sirianni because my, my goodness, are you going to need all the prayers you can get because this was a horrible start and the media in Philadelphia is going to be waiting for this man on a daily basis for the foreseeable future. If there was ever a press conference not that you did not want to show up unprepared for, it was that one. Good luck to that, brother. How does Nick Sirianni look after his first news conference? Like a puppet. Like a puppet. That's what he looks like. This is the Mike McCarthy situation in Dallas on steroids. Just like I said, Jerry Jones isn't going to hire anybody. We had Jimmy Johnson on the show. Really, like, the, the, the Cowboys are suffering from the curse of Jimmy Johnson. Won a couple Super Bowls, got too much credit. Jerry's ego couldn't handle it. Uh, got rid of him, bring in Switzer, won with Johnson's players, and never since then, right? And since then has avoided, with the exception of Parcells, briefly, the big personality man in charge who would get credit. And it seems to me what's going on in Philadelphia is a version of that, but on steroids. It's not so much about the ego and, and getting the credit. It's that Jeffrey Lurie, the owner, and Howie Roseman, the GM, want someone they can control, period. According to that same Marcus Hayes column in the Philadelphia Inquirer, Stephen A., published yesterday, I suggest people check it out. He said that after five years of Peterson taking his orders, he, he came at them with, hey, I'd like to choose my own personnel or at least decide when and where, who's going to play what. And <laughs> a couple weeks later, he's gone. He's gone. As soon as he stopped being a puppet, he was gone. And what I say about Peterson's press conferences last year, especially as it pertained to Carson Wentz, I told you, it sounded like he didn't have autonomy. It sounds like he couldn't make decisions. That's what's going on. Dysfunction always starts at the very top. You want to see a dysfunction? And Jeffrey Lurie's been praised oftentimes as a great owner in American team sports. He's lost that distinction. This is a debacle at this point. And, and you can see that they hired a guy who was not at liberty even to make decisions about basic stuff uh, pertaining to the team. When Peterson finally wanted control back because the Carson Wentz thing went off the rails, they got rid of him. They replaced him with a guy who they believe they can control. And the first press conference... Sends a message to Eagles fans, loud and clear, they found their man. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think, so, so this is the reason, too, we pay more attention to press conferences this year than we have in years past. And you hate to bring this name up every time a coaching vacancy is filled, but it's Eric Bieniemy Because you think about some of the press conferences We've seen him in. You think about some of the post-game interviews when you look back to after the Super Bowl when asked by, I believe it's Steve Weiss, about what that meant to Andy Reid. 
You think about all the things his players say about him as a leader, as a communicator, as a builder of men. And so now when we see these other guys, these other coaches who get these jobs, we say to ourselves, okay, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to learn why this dude was so much better than Eric Bieniemy. why this dude is the pick for this job. And we've bit off kneecaps and we've knocked out teeth and now we've written statements to give and we don't even know the statement. Now, here's what I know about football coaches. And I played, I played for a coach who wasn't necessarily a great communicator publicly. He also wasn't a great communicator privately. That team was really bad. And when I was done with that team, that team continued to be bad. And I thought that was a part of it, the leadership, the, the, the galvanizing the troops, as Stephen A. often mentions. And so when I hear him speak, like, I know this. If I ask Stephen A to speak about journalism, if I ask him to speak about broadcasting, if I ask Max to do the same, speak about boxing, if I ask Molly to speak about hosting, y'all don't need a sheet to tell me how y'all feel about that. Y'all don't need a sheet to tell me about the way you go about your day to excel at that job. If you ask me about football, all the reasons I love it, why I approached it, approached it the way I did, why I see it, the way I see it, I could talk to you for four hours and I would never need a piece of paper. And if I was going to get the opportunity to take over a job where they had a quarterback controversy, whether I had autonomy or not, I would have an answer because I know you're going to ask me that. A huge part of being a head coach is being prepared. And though he had a sheet to read, I don't know if it was written by him or written by his agents, he wasn't prepared. And you better be prepared in Philly. When you're taking over a bad team, you're taking over a team that's cap strapped, you're taking over a team that has a quarterback controversy, you're taking over a team in a city where people don't like BS, where people don't deal with losers well. And the first time you come off, you come off as a loser. Now, Darius Leonard came to this guy's defense. Uh, I think I saw Tory Smith say something. Not having a great initial press conference doesn't make you a bad football coach. It doesn't mean that this team can't excel under your tutelage, under your leadership, but it sure as hell is a bad start.